G'day guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video we're going to be doing a diesel purge on the fuel injection system on the Land Cruiser 200 series behind me. We're also going to talk a little bit about what a diesel purge is and why you might want to think about doing it on your vehicle. And we're going to try and analyse some of the data from the computers, uh, the onboard computer in the Land Cruiser here to see whether or not it makes a difference to the injectors and the fuel system in general. So stay tuned and let's get straight into today's video. To start off, today we're going to be working on a 2014 Toyota Land Cruiser 200 series. Now the engine in this vehicle is a 4.5 litre V8 twin turbo diesel. So let's start with why we might want to do a diesel purge and what exactly a diesel purge is. So this here is the diesel purge that I'm going to be using today. It's a liquid which is a combination of chemicals and solvents that we inject into the fuel injection system and it aims to clean out any built up deposits left over time. So in today's video we're going to be using the Liquid Molly Diesel Purge Plus. So this system here claims that it will clean the entire fuel injection system. It will also increase the ignition uh, performance of the vehicle and uh, prevent against corrosion. Now, claims made by Liquid Molly and also other injection cleaning systems do say that they can reduce the knocking noise that sometimes occurs in these diesel vehicles, and that's just due to wear and tear or deposits built up on the injectors themselves. So we'll see today whether or not we get any sort of quieter running of the engine itself. So this particular cleaner here can be used as a standalone cleaner where we can disconnect some of the fuel hoses and use, run the engine solely off this product. Otherwise you can put this into your fuel tank and mix it with diesel and it will clean over time as well. So in today's test, we're gonna be using this as a concentrate cleaner, which means we're gonna be pulling off some of the hoses from our fuel system here and running the engine directly off this liquid to try and get a concentrate and thorough clean of the entire fuel injection system in this vehicle. So like I mentioned, today we're going to be using the Liquid Molly Diesel Purge Plus. Now, there's a couple of reasons I chose this particular cleaner, and we'll go over them now. So the first one is the company itself. Liquid Molly is a reputable company, and its products are sold all over the world. They make good quality chemicals and solvents, and therefore I'm confident in putting this into the vehicle today is not going to do any harm to the vehicle. So the other one is cost. These products are relatively affordable, they're not too expensive, and something you can buy on an ongoing basis to keep your fuel system clean. So some of the claims that this particular product make are that it cleans the injection system instantly, it restores engine power and economy, and reduces exhaust smoke and engine noise. So we're going to try and put a few of those things uh, today to the test, just by seeing what sort of uh, data the engine ECU can read from the injectors themselves and the associated fuel injection system. Now in addition to using a diesel purge today, I'm also going to be adding a solvent, uh, a, an additive to the fuel tanks today, which is the diesel clean and boost. This is also a by Liquid Molly as well. It's just another system uh, cleaner that you can put into the fuel tanks of your vehicle and it will just uh, obviously feed into the engine as required. So we're gonna get straight into now applying this concentrate into the, uh, the engine as per the diesel purge instructions. So in order to do that, we're gonna need a couple of things today. So we've just got a box of gloves here because uh, obviously the diesel may spill out of the hoses as we disconnect them from the filters. We've got a small filter here which will allow the diesel purge will run through as the return lines push back the fuel from the engine. A small tool kit and just a couple of pliers to undo the uh, hose clamps attaching those uh, fuel hoses to the filters. Obviously the diesel purge itself and we're just going to pour that into a container today. With a diesel purge, you're having the engine run it off it. You want to make sure you don't run it dry and it sucks air into the system. Therefore, we're putting it into a container like this and putting it into the engine bay. We'll be able to see the level and switch the engine off before it empties out. Having a container like this is, uh, you can do it straight from here. However, you just won't be able to see that level of liquid remaining. It's also handy just to have a rag or a dirty cloth as well, just for any spilled diesel or mess that's made along the way. If you do choose to do the diesel purge concentrate like I'm doing today, it's going to be a matter of trying to find the fuel system in your engine bay to be able to find those intake and return fuel lines. So every vehicle is going to be that little bit different, hence why I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail today in regards to where those intake lines are. As you can probably see from this video as well, I am running an aftermarket post uh, fuel filter. So in this case, I'm going to have to remove that to get access to some of those lines and then use those lines as those intakes. From standard though, normally you will find your intake and return lines on top of the fuel filter or in that area of your engine bay. Once you have found those lines, it's just a matter of submerging them into the diesel purge and running the engine to allow it to run off that concentrate. Now it's a good idea if you do have to add extra hoses, try and make sure they are a fuel grade hose as the return lines can get up to about 90 degrees Celsius. 
Once you have finished the purge, it's just a matter of reassembling the system and then re-priming that fuel pump. Okay, so there we have it. Fuel filter is mounted back onto the bracket again. All the lines are connected, the fuel's primed, and the engine starts and runs like it should, so that's all good. So the diesel purge has been put through the engine now. Now it's just a matter of putting the diesel cleaner into the tank and giving that a bit of a chance to work its, uh, its way through as well. Okay, so we're now gonna add in this Liquid Molly Diesel Clean and Boost formula. So this particular uh, chemical also uh, states and claims that it can clean injectors and reduce exhaust smoke, and it adds lubrication uh, to low sulfur diesel. So again, it's something similar to the diesel purge, but obviously it's gonna be diluted into the tanks of the vehicle. Now just a quick tip, if you do put additives into your vehicle, just make sure you know how big the tanks are and make sure you put the uh, correct ratio in. So this particular product I uh, recommend anywhere between 10 and 30 mil per 10 liters of fuel. Now keep in mind on this Toyota Land Cruiser uh, 200 series, there's two Two fuel tanks. So you've got a roughly a 90 and a 50 litre tank equaling to a total of 138 litres. So when you're putting this in it's going to go into one of those tanks. So make sure you know which tank it's going into and get the correct proportions. You don't want to be sticking in the recommended dosage for 138 litres just into one tank that's going to be well and truly over concentrated. So measure it out. This particular product when you open the lid does come with a little measuring type cup onto the lid which is included and that's uh, 25 mil there. So we'll stick a few of these cap loads in and then we'll go for a, a drive for a few days. We'll come back in a few days when we've done a few kilometers, see if we can get all the system cleaned out and we'll just see whether it makes a difference. So we'll see you guys in a couple of days. So we're back in the house now and it's now time to try and ascertain whether or not this injection cleaner and the additive has made any difference by trying to analyze some of the data. So what we're using today is a program that connects to the vehicle's onboard ECU computer and you can see here a large list of data inputs that we can achieve from this software. The first thing we can see is the engine is currently off. This is shown by a value of zero for the engine speed RPM. When we start the engine up, we can see this data refresh. Although the refresh data rate of about four seconds on this software is not great, it's still gonna give us a good indication of some of the values of the important uh, measurements we're looking at today and to see whether these products actually work. So once the engine started up, we can see that the engine run time starts to count up. And this is measured in seconds. This is gonna give us an indication and time points along the way that we can measure some of these values. Further, we can also see a load value placed on the engine. Now this is not measured from a particular sensor, rather a bunch of calculations the ECU does in relation to airflow, fuel usage, etc. This is uh, specific to different manufacturers and a good indication as to how much load the engine is put under. So some of the data that we're going to pay particularly close attention to today is the injection feedback value for each of the eight injectors in this V8 Land Cruiser. So what we're looking for is these values to be as close to zero as possible. As these values start to increase or decrease away from that zero mark, it is the onboard computer ascertaining and in controlling how much fuel goes through each injector. So as we can see here from injectors 2, 3, 4 and 7, we're getting values of between 1 and 2, whether that positive or negative. So the positive values indicate that the injector is being provided extra fuel and the negative, the reverse, being in provided less fuel. When the injectors start to reach the values of between 2 and 3 cubic millimetres per stroke, this is when you're going to start to hear some of the diesel knocking sound and oh, when you might need to start looking at replacing those injectors. So with today's test, we're going to be looking at the injection feedback data along with the calculated load and also doing the tests both in a hot and cold condition. So the first test we're going to do is when the car is first started up for the day and we can see the coolant temp here is nice and low. So the way in which I'm gonna run the test today is I'm gonna do a 10 minute idle both when the vehicle is cold and then after a drive when the vehicle is at operating temperature. I'm gonna do that both for before and after the injection cleaners. And we're gonna use the average of those injection values along with the load to see whether there's any uh, significant difference. So here we're coming up to the 300 second mark of the cold uh, test before those injection cleaners. We can see here that the injection feedback values are still relatively the same and the load is slowly decreasing as the engine warms up. So now we're approaching that 600 second mark being the 10 minutes. And you can see there the coolant temp has now increased to a 45 degree. So it's not at full operating temperature, but you can also notice there that the load has decreased as well. So the way in which we're going to measure and view the data today is by taking a snapshot of every 60 seconds and recording the injection feedback value along with the engine load. 
We're then going to average out the injection values for each individual injector and see whether or not it makes a difference both again before and after during cold and hot operating temperatures. The first one here is the injector feedback before the additives and the clean when the engine is cold. We can see from this graph that the injector values alter significantly from injector 8 being at the zero mark and injector 3 being at the minus 1.5 cubic millimeter mark. Further, we can also see that engine load starting at 32.5% and ending down there at 21.9%, giving us a 33% decrease in the engine load as the vehicle starts to warm up. So it's now time to do the warm test. So again, before the injection cleaners, we're going to run the engine at idle for 10 minutes at full operating temperature. Now we can see there that the coolant temperature is sitting around the 80 degree mark, which represents that full operating temperature. Now I'm just going to put this into fast motion. There's no need to sit here and analyze the data as we go, and we'll have a look at it once we've completed. So now we've completed that injector feedback test before the cleaners during full operating temperature, we can see here that we've got all those averages for each injector and the engine load. So one thing you can notice from the visual graph here is that the injector values have stayed relatively consistent compared to that before when the engine was cold. Now the injectors are warm at an operating temperature, regardless of their values, they seem to stay at that particular level of cubic millimeters per stroke. We can also see the average engine load is of 18.5%. So it's now time to move straight on to the after test, which is a couple of days after we've added the diesel purge and the additives to the fuel tank. So the vehicle's done a few hundred kilometers since we've added all those chemicals and given enough time to try and circulate through the fuel system to try and clean up and improve some of these uh, values that we're looking at today. So the first test we got here is the cold test. Again, the same conditions as the before test. We're starting the engine from cold, letting it idle for 10 minutes and obtaining those results. So we can see here the coolant temp is nice and low and is slowly increasing. And the calculated load of the engine in percentage is also decreasing as the engine starts to warm up. So moving straight onto some of the results we got from this uh, after test while the engine is cold. So just like the before test, we can see quite a variation in those injector values upon startup of the engine. However, as the engine starts to warm up, you can see the decrease in the variation of those results shown by those straighter lines towards the end of the graph. So in this case, we're looking at injector eight probably being closest to zero at minus 0 0.1 and injector three being at minus 1.3 being the furthest from zero. In terms of engine load, we're looking at a start of 34.9% at the 30 second mark and ending there at 21.1% at the 10 minute mark. So again, there's a percentage change there of a 39% decrease in engine load. So we're going to move straight onto the hot test. And again, I'm just going to fast forward through the results. There's no need to sit here and analyze the data list as they go. Once that hot test was complete, we've now got the plotted graph in relation to each of those feedback values. So we can see there again, just like the before test, once the engine is hot, the variation is very minimal in those injector values for each injector, despite whereabouts they sit. So we can see here that injector one is by far the best being at zero, and we've got there the biggest being injector three at minus 1.1. Now throughout this test, the engine load was also 18.5%, which is identical to that of the before test at full operating temperature. So the best way to compare these tests now is to put the averages side by side. So we'll start with the cold test. We can see here that the before values are indicated by the blue bars on this graph and the after values by the green bars. Now you can see in almost every occasion, the green bars are closer to that value of zero uh, than the before test. So this indicates that there has been some sort of positive result and we have just slightly increase the effectiveness of those injectors or the efficiency of those injectors during the cold startup of the vehicle. Again, looking at the injector feedback averages for the hot test, we're doing the same thing by comparing a before and after. And we can see here, again, we've got some positive results with most of the values uh, being closer to that of the zero mark than initially starting with. So we can see here that we have some significant results, uh, particularly in injector two, where we can see the before was 1.7 and the after was one. So we've almost halved that gap towards the zero mark. Also in injector eight, we can see that minus 0.1 has then been converted to a 0.1. So we've had a positive result there as well. 
So we can see from injector six here that there has been a significant change in the values here, but it's been from a minus 0 0.6 to a 0 0.6. So it hasn't actually brought that injector value any closer to the zero mark. We can also see here there is one injector being that of injector four that has actually increased away from that zero mark going from minus 0.1 to minus 0.5. So there we have it guys, we have seen some minor changes there in the injector feedback values after using these products. So although not all injectors uh, had a positive result, most of them did and overall there was a slight improvement in those feedback values. So I thought I'd quickly mention as to why we use the injector feedback values as a bit of a measuring tool for these products. So those values are put there so the ECU can compute how much or how little fuel to put through each injector to maintain a uh, efficient and healthy combustion in each cylinder. So as the, the life of those injectors increase and the more fuel that's put through them, there are small deposits and also wear and tear on those injectors and the internal components, which affect the way the fuel passes through and how efficiently the fuel passes through each injector. Those feedback values allow the computer to compute how much more or how less fuel to stick through to make sure there's an even amount of fuel passing through all cylinders and a nice even combustion in each chamber. Now the reason it's so important to look at the injectors themselves is they are an expensive item to replace when they do wear out. Now this cruiser here being a V8 and having eight of them, if I need to replace those, it's gonna cost a significant amount of money. So anything we can do to prolong the life of those injectors and keep them in the engine, the better. Now saying that, this is not the only way to measure the performance and the efficiency of the fuel injection system. This is just one way that we measured today to see whether these products work. Now the other question is, would I do this again? And look, the answer is probably yes, just based on the fact that these products don't cost a whole lot of money. I'm not sure whether I'll do the, the diesel purge again, taking away the fuel lines, but it would be very interesting to see the results of an extended use of the pre-mixed stuff into the fuel tanks to see whether it makes a little bit of a difference overall. And if anything, it might help just prolong the life of those injectors and just give that vehicle a little bit of preventive maintenance over time. So guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it gave you a bit of an idea about the things that I do to my vehicle to try and increase the longevity and the performance and efficiency of the engine. If you have any questions or comments, make sure to leave a comment in the uh, comment section below this video. Otherwise, you can hit us up on Exploring Oz on both Facebook and Instagram. Otherwise, guys, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.